just wanted to introduce our next next presenter. So we have uh, Ibu um, Ibu Kirak. Uh, she's the VP and head of network deployment uh, at Ericsson. So welcome to the stage. Thanks for setting the scene. You made my life easier. Welcome, everyone. Now I want you to imagine with me. Imagine all the information that you need to manage the life cycle of your networks is at your fingertips. All of it, your site, its components, their geospatial details, topography details, performance information, all of it. And imagine this data is structured, accurate, real time. And imagine it's in a standard format that you don't need any interpretation or translation. And imagine they are connected with contiguous processes, so you don't need any handovers or integrations. And imagine this data is enriched, and you can visualize it. Now, even imagine it more that you can... <laughs> now, even imagine it more that you can, you can put it into a system that you can interrogate, you can interpret and understand it better. And you can build algorithms to help you uh, create AI, ML, and analytics in your systems. And you can predict the outcome of your potential planned activities. And please imagine with me that your entire user base can reach this data instantaneously. So every milestone, every user in your ecosystem can make insightful, accurate, yet still very fast decisions in the network lifecycle management scheme. Wouldn't this be ideal for all of us? We are really dreaming about it. And now, with digital twin technology, we see it possible. So what are digital twins? Basic um, Wikipedia description says, digital twins are virtual representations of real-world entity or processes. How do we translate this into telecoms, where we have highly disconnected data, and they are mainly fractured, and they are in many, many different formats, and they are managed by dislocated organizations and in isolated projects. Well, digital twins can make you collapse all these data and processes together, and it can bring you a real version representation of your network. And when you digitalize your network, you're going to understand it better. Now you will know, instantaneously, you will know how the trends are influencing your networks, how technology can help you to improve it, how you can increase your, improve your sustainability, your operational efficiency, or how you can streamline your processes even better. So digital twins can give you the very much demanded single source of truth for your networks. And the adoption cycle, as we see it, is quite similar for every technology, every technology-based industry, uh, which is growing as fast as uh, telecoms do. In the beginning, the focus is on building capabilities to deliver. But as the industry matures and the technology matures, the shifting goes through optimization. And there is no, there is, there is no one size solution for all of it. But digital twins are interpreted or recognized to be a key technology to help industries. Currently, many industries have already adopted digital twins and the uh, digital twins have created their uh, ecosystem already. It has its own tool suites, its own processes, its own off-the-shelf capabilities. And currently, it's addressing around a $10 trillion in many industry verticals, and significant efficiencies have already been recorded. So this gives us the great benefit to leverage these existing capabilities, configure them for our needs in telecoms, and enrich and enhance with our own data, own processes, and our own business logic to make it unique and usable for telecoms. And of course, the complexity in telecoms will not uh, rest. It will keep increasing because currently we are already managing multi-vendor, multi-tenant, multi-technology networks and 5G scaling up. We will need to overlay millions of 
cells over these networks. And this requires first time right. It requires precision. And again, there is no one size fits solution because every element you use in a network comes with its own variables. And you have many different configuration alternatives. So each network is unique. All of them need to be attended with this. And if you do not synchronize, your ownership and the frequency of updating the data, then this naturally leads into many efficiencies, very unwanted efficiency. But we think it's more even important that we are wasting a great potential of providing insights to your next planning cycle, and it's gone irreversibly. Now, how can digital twins help us to inject intelligence? First, it brings standardization, which helps us with the increased accuracy and consistency of your data, with common data connected and correlated with business logic. And with automation, this will help you to collaborate better. And it will help us to visualize. We can visualize digital twins in any way your users need, 3D, tabular, graphical. And when you have this, you're going to make your network available to all your users instantaneously and easily. And then comes simulation. Once you simulate, predict the outcomes of your planned activities. This will also help you to close the lifecycle management loop and provide insights to your planning cycle. This makes you to take millions of variables into consideration and explore multiple scenarios in a very short time to address all your challenges and make the best business decision at all times. Now, what are some tangible use cases that we can talk about in uh, telecoms? We have a set of data that can be standardized, that can be fixed if you apply standards to the attributes, size, weight, um, or power. But there is a set of data that you need to simulate because they they vary on a constant basis, such as how RF elements interact with each other or interact with an obstacle, like a building. And your networks are consisting of all of these information, existing and planned. Now, digital twin systems inherently optimizes the digitalization effort, and it helps you to create the model of your networks. And once you enhance these models or your data with these models once you enrich your data now what you have cannot be only called as a simple virtual representation of your site assets it's more than that now it's a landscape it's topography it's topologies operational information configuration information all of it now what you have is a visual representation of the reality and your users when they reach an element of the site, they're not reaching only a photographic image of an antenna. When they reach, react, interact with an antenna, the attributes of that antenna, dimensions, weight, power, also unique identifiers of that specific antenna. How high is it installed? What's the azimuth? What's the tilt? They are all instantaneously available for your users. They don't need to have the specific base knowledge of that specific antenna to interrogate it better. The system inherently gives this to you. And one, once you visualize it, and once you automate around this, you can simulate any outcome. And we talking about automation, what can we automate? Well, at this point of time, it's limited with your inventiveness. For instance, you can leverage virtual recognition capabilities and automatically identify your uh, element that you have digitalized. Or you can significantly automate many aspects of your site engineering process, site design process, bill of material planning process, inventory management process. And because you're d digitalizing the infrastructure as well, infrastructure elements as well, you can highly automate your structural analysis efforts. And all of these are going to reduce time. They are going to reduce the potential of human error. And it will help you to improve potential of your specific data. 
In Ericsson, we have been investing in digital twins over the course of a couple of years. We already have our tool ecosystem that we are managing our sites and site assets with. We have a core system. We are building uh, capabilities around this core system. All of these capabilities are continuously connected and they are based on open APIs. We have a common language that our processes use. We have created our common asset library, and this is consisting of Ericsson equipment as well as third-party equipment. And our processes are continuously integrated with each other. And our, our, um, we ha our system allows us to build business rules to relate these assets to another. That's how we enrich our, uh, our data. All of these help us to, to uh, di um, digitalize your network, but also there is a very important aspect that our system can ingest data from multiple sources. There is the very high technology drone and laser um, technologies that provides us very accurate digital twins but also our system can ingest data from existing drawings, existing CAT drawings. And equally, even maybe a little bit more importantly, we are building a very innovative system that can leverage your existing uh, installed base information. So we can use your OSS data, we can use your um, uh, inventory data, we can use your existing site surveys, and very incomparable speeds, we can digitalize your incumbent assets. And once we do that, you're going to have a, a great real view of your network. And in, in Ericsson, we have provided different user interfaces for every user in the system. So they are reaching to the common data, they are updating the common data. And that's how we are keeping our data accurate at all times. And for us, the future is the metaverse. It's the fancy virtual universe that you enter and start interacting with. And what we envision as Ericsson is a fully in, in, uh, immersive environment that any user, without having specific knowledge of every element, can enter, start interacting with the elements, get feedbacks from the instrumentation of the elements, and everything is uh, interpreted intrinsically. What we want to ideally do is understand our networks, and describe them in a way to reduce or even eliminate the need for prerequisite knowledge. And we want to represent very valuable insights in an effective single user interface. And that's possible. Thank you.